love the channel and find it useful in becoming a happy retiree. Subscribe today. Uh, John joins us on the line. John, good morning. What's, what's going on? How can I help? John, are you with me? Can I yes, hear? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Hey, John. Sorry. hey no, no worries. No worries. What's going on? How can I help? I appreciate your insight. See, I usually listen to you every Sunday morning. And you brought up, I've been very confused about these tariffs. You, you brought up just now and almost answered my question, but I'm confused by what uh, Trump is doing, and that is that we're putting a $60 billion trade deficit on China. But they're not putting that much on, on us. That, that kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. In other words, we can't expect to compete with China if China is paying their people $5 an hour and our people are getting paid $20 an hour. Does that make any sense? Well, just remember, okay, so I think that this is the first thing to clear up on this. When, when we're talking about trade, remember that this, the, the numbers that are getting thrown around are on the aggregate amount of goods traded. So uh -huh. if you think about, so that's like the first thing I think, I, I bet you, I'm sure people have been a little confused on that this week. And, and just remember that, that when, when, they, when we say $60 billion worth of goods, it's not a $60 billion tariff. It's a tariff of 15 to 20% on $60 billion worth of goods. So that's the first gotcha. thing to think of, okay? Yeah, okay, that's good. All right, right. So, it's, so, so really if you start doing the math, it gets relatively insignificant. They're $3 billion. On the, they're, they're, that's the gross amount of our goods going into their country. 15, 20% of that, it's 500 million bucks, right? What's $500 million when it comes to a 20 trillion dollar economy? It's 0 0.00, here I did the math, point, it's 0 0.0025 of a percent. Now, what is the $60 billion we imposed? How does that hurt them? Well, we're talking about their products getting about $10 billion more expensive for us to buy. If you go on the other side of this, the tariffs that they impose on our goods, it had makes our stuff more expensive. So here's a here's a perfect example. If you go, if you look at what does it cost to buy a Jeep Wrangler in the United States, right? It costs right. twenty five grand in the U.S. Let's call it thirty grand in the U.S. to buy a Jeep Wrangler. What does it cost if you're in China? It costs like seventy grand to buy the same Jeep Wrangler. Why? Is because they are imposing a tariff to make our goods more expensive to Chinese consumers because. They're trying to help or protect or prop up their companies. So they want you to buy, if you go, go down a list of Chinese car companies, they want you to buy a Don Fang car. That's, yeah. one, that's one of their big uh, their automakers. That's like part of their big four of the Don Fang. I don't know how to pronounce this stuff. They want you to buy a BYD or a Geely or a, they want you to get an SUV, not from an American company. They don't want you to buy a Ford SUV. They want you to buy a Cherry, C-H-E-R-Y SUV. And they impose a percentage price increase on, on our goods so that local consumers over there will, will buy you know, their stuff versus our stuff. And that's exactly what so, – so the question is, are, are, what are these supposed to do, right? Are we supposed to – are we doing this to punish them or are we doing it to help our guys, our home team compete? And, and I think the answer is in this particular case of tariffs, it's – Definitely, want, it's it's both of those two items. It's one, mm -hmm. it's saying, hey, we've got the steel industry in the United States and the aluminum industry in the United States. Chinese steel has a, arguably a much lower quality, so it and that that means lower standards, lower quality. And they, that means they can dump their steel on the global marketplace and reduce the overall cost of steel, which then hurts. You know, my hometown, Lucan Steel Company from the from the, the town of Coatesville, Pennsylvania, near where I, really where I grew up. So it hurts the, the U.S. steel makers that have obviously a much higher standards, higher cost of labor, and it, and it hurts us in the global marketplace. Now, I think that that's that's not a great example, even though China and steel we, we, that's kind of been in the headlines. Ironically, we bear, we basically buy almost no steel from them anyway. We, we, we buy like 1% of our steel from China. On the other side of it, John, as you and I are talking about tariffs, it, it, I think it obviously is a form of punishment as well. You know, there's a, there's a couple great op-eds this week about all of the 
uh, all of the intellectual property that gets stolen oh, from, yeah. by China, right? In order to, for a U.S. Mm-hmm. company to go over there, what do they want? They want mm-hmm. you to sign over everything. They want you to mm-hmm. sign over all the intellectual property that you have as a company in order to access their it, their billions of their billion plus consumers. They say, "Well, look, you want to be here, you want to sell to us, then you got to give us your data. You got to give us your intellectual property." So, let, let me ask you this question, and, and you've answered my question. I appreciate it. But uh, what? So we are basically putting tariffs on on China or other countries that are approximately what they are putting on us in various goods. Is that a correct statement or an incorrect statement? Well, I would say maybe on a proportional statement, because remember, we import a a whole lot more from them than they import from us. So so, so you can look at it that way, where we buy tons of their stuff, right? Oh, yeah. We don't really (laughs) buy a whole lot. uh, They don't really buy a lot of our stuff. So think about it. Here's, Here's what we buy from them, right? We buy consumer electronics from the Chinese, mm-hmm. you know, two hundred billion plus dollars. Mm-hmm. We bu- we buy electronic equipment. We buy uh, machine. We get machinery made, and, and we we purchase parts of electro uh, machinery from them. We buy a ton of apparel from the Chinese. We get our, you know, this. Oh, yeah. We make our stuff. Our stuff and gets I'm, made over there. Mm-hmm. We buy it back from China. We mm-hmm. buy a ton of our furniture. That's here in the United States. We buy it from China and it comes over here. Fabricated mm. metal gets made over there. We buy it. We buy right. leather from the Chinese. A ton of the leather that here is here in the United States from China. Chemicals comes from over there. Plastics comes from China. Textiles comes from China. What do they buy from us? I, they basically buy soybeans and planes. That's really what they get from us. Right. Th- because no, we... That's exactly what you're saying, and and, and it's also a, a situation where, in a broad term, this sixty million dollars is going to kind of wash out. Now, the sixty million dollars that we get from them may be on A, B, and C, whereas the I mean that we put on them may be on A, B, and C. And well, well, John, here's what I think is happening right now. The numbers, even though they sound big, right? They sound sixty billion dollars, right? That's just the amount of goods, and then we're going to pay. Uh, there's going to be a tariff on that amount. Barely any any sort of price increase on our goods going over there. So what I see here is this is just a bunch of symbolism. All this is right now is a fight over it's us repositioning ourselves as a country economically and saying, look, we don't want we want to punish you for stealing our our intellectual property for all these years. We want to take a harder line stand in order to do so. So right. these are always. A, these are, a, these, these are a these are a sim. Trump said this a million times. Is level the playing field, right? Right, and I think that's I think John, and and I think that's what we're trying to do here. I think that these numbers right now are not big enough to be economically meaningful. However, symbolically, we're moving in the direction of we're trying to move in the direction of showing more strength, less tolerance from you guys stealing our stuff. And this is a step to show strength in that. No economist, there is no disagreement that tariffs are, are bad economically because they're effectively a tax. It's a tax on them. And if we impose them, it's a tax on us, right? If we want to buy their goods and we impose a tax on it, we still have a free open economy here. They're more expensive. So there's no disagreement within the economic community that they're bad. Tariffs are bad economically if it becomes a big part of our economic system. It, what, what's happening here, these are, these are just small symbolic tariffs that are trying to send a message. So if it stays here, John, I think that I, Trump is trying to say, look, we, we don't want to tolerate this. He's trying to show some signs of strength to do that. And, and that's, that's, the, that's the stage that we're in. If, if, we, if we leave it here, John, I think we're totally fine. This has zero negative impact on the economy. If this turns into a giant trade fight and we impose tariffs on a trillion dollars of goods or 500 billion, that start, that's an issue. If they impose tariffs on $50 billion of our goods going to them, that becomes a real problem. So we, that's why I, I, I don't think we will get there. I don't think that this spit spat is like a two, couple of nine-year-olds fighting each other. Not a lot of damage is getting done, right? That's for now. If this fight turns into two heavyweights fully hitting each other with full 
full might and power, that's when you can see this economy taking a real hit. That's when you'll see the stock market to take a real hit, much beyond what we, we saw this past week. I just don't think we get there. I don't think we get there because everybody, all economists understand that this is bad for business if it, if it continues from here. That's why we will be keeping a very sharp eye on what happens with global trade and tariffs with our big economic rival, China. Hi, I'm Wes Moss, and thanks for taking a minute to hear about what's so different about my new book, You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think. So unlike other retirement books, this book will give you a step-by-step guide, whether in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, to learn from what these successful and happy retirees did to get there. I hope you enjoy the book, but more importantly, I know that it'll help you retire sooner than you think.